Whoa! Glad you could make it here tonight, boys and girls. Uh, considering all the alcohol missing from my liquor cabinet this morning, I'm glad I could make it here tonight. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, it's a special Halloween episode of Double Jack's Forbidden Fables. All the writing is provided by yours truly. But with a special guest narrator forewarning. And voice actor The Crow Flies makes an appearance in the mix. Isn't that fun? Animated, produced, and distributed by Reposaur. That's right, boys and girls. I call this an all-star extravaganza. But uh, for legal reasons, I have to refer to it as the night in question. So please, strap yourselves in for four warnings as she tells the tale of... Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Pamela Price, but everyone just called her Punkin. She loved autumn, Halloween, and making jack-o'-lanterns more than anything. She had a difficult childhood. She was kind and warm, but not the brightest of people. She could easily be tricked and manipulated. From giving up her lunch money to feed starving puppies, when it actually bought the other kids some candy, to being the subject of some pretty embarrassing pranks, Punkin had a lot of bad days. Her mom had bought her a toy scarecrow doll with a pumpkin head. It bore a large, caring smile that would immediately make Pam feel better. She named the doll Jack, of course. She would often come home from school with tears and cuddle up with Jack for an hour or so until she felt better. She was sure that Jack took all of her sorrow away. The worst event of her childhood happened when she was 14, when her uncle had almost molested her. He had tricked her into a bedroom as he was babysitting her, and conned Pumpkin into taking her dress off. Luckily, he only got a hand on her leg before her parents came home early and caught him. He was sent to prison within a few months, and the family even moved to a new town. Apparently, when the police had checked his trailer out, they had discovered that he had developed an obsession with Pumpkin. Pictures of her were hanging all over the walls, and he had piles of diaries filled with descriptions of his fantasies with her. Most were quite disturbing. The family was relocated and given new names to help move on, but the nickname Pumpkin followed with her. At 19, she moved into her own place. The house was purchased by her parents, who wanted to start giving her some privacy now that she was an adult. They found a nice, one-bedroom cottage with a pumpkin patch in the garden, and they knew she'd love it. They weren't wrong. She adored her cottage, and especially her new pumpkin patch. She may not have been the smartest person around, but she was a whiz at gardening. By the next year, she had grown some of the biggest pumpkins in the county. She even won a blue ribbon at the county fair for her favorite pumpkin. This beautiful guy was going to be the centerpiece of her lawn that coming Halloween. When Halloween night rolled around, Pumpkin began carving her favorite pumpkin into the perfect jack-o'-lantern. He had a big smile and large, happy eyes. Once the candle was lit inside him, he began to glow a luminous golden yellow. She was awestruck by her creation. She even made a small wish that he could come to life and be real. She heard leaves crunch at the window in that moment, but when she looked up, nothing was there. After this private moment and a quick scare, she giggled to herself and then took the kingly pumpkin outside and set him in his place of honor. His face grew bright orange in the moonlight and illuminated the darkness in her front yard. She kissed him on top of his orange melon head and went back inside. Soon, 
she was cuddled up asleep under her quilted blankets, dreaming pleasant dreams. It was probably hours later when she was awoken by a hard knock at her front door. The knock shocked her from her deep rest, and even made her a little nervous. It was far too late at night for trick-or-treaters, after all. It was just past midnight. Plus, the knock was hard and heavy, not the knock of a child. The only light in her house was the moonlight pouring through her windows. She flicked at her bedroom light switch, but the power was apparently out. She lit a spare candle that she hadn't used for her jack-o'-lantern, and then made her way cautiously to the door. Halfway there, she heard another loud knock. It jarred her, and she began to shake. Who is it? She yelled. I'm Jack, the pumpkin you wish to life. It spoke back. She was suddenly excited, though also stunned. She couldn't believe her beloved pumpkin was really alive and that her wish had come true. She rushed to the door and opened it. Standing before her was the large man with a pumpkin head. He waved hello with a huge jack-o'-lantern grin. She flew into his arms, hugging him. I can't believe you're really here, she said. She held him for a moment when she suddenly realized that his hands had moved under her robe. She tried to pull back, but Jack's hands groped her full and shapely backside with his fingers and then started to explore further. She began to squirm and mutter in protest. What are you doing, Jack? She yelled, scared. You said you loved me and wished me to life. Now I want to love you back. <sighs> he said with a sly tone. He pushed her to the floor and then threw the front door closed. Inside, you could hear cries and the tearing of clothes, as well as other unsavory noises. This went on for hours, and then, silence. A few days later, the police were called in. All they found was Pumpkin's torn robe and nightgown and a silly pumpkin head Halloween mask on her living room floor. Her power and phone lines had been severed by what appeared to be bolt cutters. They eventually found a spot outside by a large bush where someone had been hiding and smoking cigarettes. There was a large, smashed jack-o'-lantern close by. It took a few more days for them to realize her real name and discover that her uncle had been released a month prior because of overcrowding. They never managed to find her or her uncle. What became of Pamela Price, or Punkin as they used to call her, remains a heavily debated mystery in her hometown. The kids even crafted a song about her that they still sing around every Halloween. Pamela, Pamela, fell in love with a gourd. Pamela, Pamela, what an odd accord. Pamela, Pamela, the jack-o'-lanterns did catch. Pamela, Pamela, now you're just another pumpkin in the patch. And they all lived happily ever after. Happy Halloween! Whoa, boy, that was some creepy stuff. I gotta say, my uncles never really cared that much for me. But it's nice to see a family come together around the holidays, am I right? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this special Halloween episode of Devil Jack's Forbidden Fables. You know, this story's really got me in the Halloween spirit. I think I'll go carve some pumpkins with the little ones. They're not kids. My kids are nothing, you know. They're just some creepy short dudes that are laying low at my house for a couple of weeks until <laughs> the heat dies down. Anyway, you all have a great Halloween, and see you next time on Devil Jack's Forbidden Fables. <laughs>